Hi, my name is Trevor Hatfield. I'm the CEO and founder of Interact, a B2B SaaS growth agency. And I'm excited to be here at Product Led Summit and to talk about how to align your team around the metrics that matter most for product led growth. The metrics we'll talk about are particular to tying your team around what we call at Interact, the five SaaS growth pillars acquisition, activation, revenue, retention, and referral. And our goal here is to fully align your team around these metrics so you can grow smarter and faster, build strategies around them, have accountability for these metrics for each of your team members, and uh, know how to track them, etc. So let's go ahead and get started. So who's this for? This is great for startups, but can be used by more or less any size business. Um, whether you're in the idea stage and, and needing to define these metrics, startup growth, um, expansion, established, even decline, it doesn't matter. These are very important metrics um, that will help you take your business to the next level. And owners, managers, and leadership team, uh, it's going to help you establish those clear goals to get your team rowing in the same direction. Um, and team members, if you're feeling like you're, there's friction or you're unsure of what your, your role's goals are, then this will really help you take these metrics to your boss and say, hey, let's get aligned on these as a team. So the initial concept of R or pirate metrics, um, which I'm using more or less the same terms, came from Dave McClure uh, from 500 Startups. And here's a link to his video. Now, this framework is actually completely different than this, but the inspiration came from here. I figured I need to give a shout out and you can check out that video. It's a short video worth, worth watching as well. So let's get started. Uh, we're going to talk about what are actual metrics. We're going to define your product's actual metrics using an example. So we won't necessarily define yours because, as I said, um, these are particular to your business. And then we're going to align your team around these metrics, uh, track your progress, and identify opportunities. So these are the concepts that we're going to talk about today, and we're going to use uh, an example to do this. So what are actionable metrics? They're the most important metrics that users take that lead them to have success with your product. Now, we created a visual here that kind of outlines um, what this would look like. And what's involved are acquisition, activation, revenue, retention, and referral. Now, the first three can kind of make a, a funnel, and that's where you see that at the top, whereas retention and referral, kind of our ongoing efforts. And we'll also talk about goals. So some of these have goals uh, associated to them that we want to define, uh, which may lead us to our North Star metric. If you're not familiar with North Star metric, this is the single metric that, um, when it has success, will drive the highest value customers. At Interact, we look at the North Star metric as a customer-driven metric, not necessarily a um, executive decided metric. We like to try to have everything data-driven and, and the North Star metric being decided by customer data. So let's define your product's actionable metrics. Um, couple things to note here. We have something we call primary metrics and secondary metrics. Um, primary just being the most important metrics for that stage in acquisition, activation, revenue, retention, or referral. And as you can see in referral, there's only primary metrics. We'll get to that. But just note that primary versus secondary really refers to importance uh, and not timing, not something that necessarily has to come first, um, but more on importance. So we will use Hotjar as an example. And Hotjar started more or less as a heat maps tool, um, but it does a lot of other things. Now, we'll, we'll concentrate on creating heat maps today as the example for, um, for Hotjar. So acquisition with the goal of attracting and converting. The primary metric is simply your customer acquisition strategy. So do you, have, do you offer a free trial? Is it a freemium product? Can you sign up for a demo? 
Um, and if you have multiple of these, you will you will want to actually define these separately, or you would want to look at these funnels separately. Um, but again, remember that this whole framework is conceptual, and it's really geared towards helping you think about metrics differently and what you really should be tracking. So if your primary acquisition strategy is a free trial, it will simply be a free trial here, and that's what we have for, for Hotjar. Secondary metrics in this case, we're just going to look up look at visits and sign up intent for now. Um, so defining sign up intent becomes important. So what are the things that lead people to potentially register for a free trial, such as visits to your pricing page, or maybe just started filling out the registration form but didn't complete it? Activation or onboarding. Um, so primary metrics here are is the single metric that delivers on the promise of your business. Also noting as the last onboarding step. Um, so when we look at this, you want to kind of uh, look at your onboarding as if you were to create a checklist for someone to work, walk through when they sign up for a trial, go ahead and lay that checklist out. Um, the last step is what we would put as our primary metric, the last user onboarding step. The other steps in there, if they're required to see success, those become your secondary metrics. And any other metrics uh, will be tracked as gap metrics uh, elsewhere. But we really want to concentrate right now is primary and secondary. So the, the metrics that create that onboarding checklist. Uh, your secondary metrics, as I mentioned, is not timing. These actually become come first, such as create an account, install an embed code, create the heat map, test the embed code that is installed, and maybe review your heat map analytics as an activated or onboarded user. Revenue. So this is broken out into two parts upgrade and in, in, um, the initial purchase and, up, and expansion revenue. So your primary metric is more or less that initial purchase or initial upgrade. Um, that's going to complete your that funnel visual that we said, the first three, first three stages. Now, secondary metrics um, are your expansion metrics. These actually become ongoing uh, ideally, uh, but do they upgrade tiers? So, so for Hotjar, for example, um, for the they have three different types of plans. Personal, they would go from basic to a plus plan or business. They may uh, increase their page views per day to increase their their spend. Um, or agency, it was their value metric was adding clients. So maybe they add an additional client. Retention or engagement. So our primary metrics for retention are what we, we were calling goals. With goals, these are the first time somebody does something. Um, now, that could be the first time they create uh, a, a second heat map, which they're only gonna do one time, right? So these are not ongoing metrics. These are the first time or the time that they create something, um, even if it's multiple times. So the event that they create a second heat map, the event that they create their fifth heat map, um, or maybe they share the a heat map for the first time or the fifth time. Ultimately, what you're looking at here is, what is the impact if someone shares a heat map five times versus one time? Does that increase the retention curve and the lifetime value of that particular cohort? And this is really important for understanding overall determining if one of these these goal primary retention metrics might end up being your North Star metric. Um, so if somebody does, if you realize at some point someone shares a heat map five times and it leads to much higher retention, that might become the your North Star metric in which your entire team wants to shoot for getting someone to do, um, you know, sharing five heat maps. Now the secondary metrics become are really features. So these can be performed multiple times. It could be um, click heat map or view scroll heat map. 
um, adding notes, downloading and sharing a heat map. But ultimately, what we're looking at doing here is saying, let's track these features and understand then at what point, um, what features are being used most versus least, um, what are driving uh, better retention, and then those in the end can lead to maybe goals as well. Um, but ultimately, secondary retention uh, metrics are going to be things, all your product products, primary features that you're tracking ongoing. So referral metrics or inv inv invite metrics, you, that's your ultimately goal. Get uh, more people into your product. So for this example, uh, a new referral invitation is sent, or maybe that invitation is accepted as the event, or maybe adding a new a new team member. So how does this all come together? As you can see on the left, we've created a, a funnel to look at as well. Um, ultimately, taking in your acquisition, activation, and revenue metrics to create that, that funnel. Now, our ongoing efforts would be separated as, as tracked metrics for multiple times each time. What, what account is, has created a new heat map in this week, this cohort? Um, or um, maybe uh, how many accounts have clicked the, a heat map? What percentage of those accounts have clicked a heat map in this month? Um, and that's going to have you understand engagement, like what percentage of your user base or customers are considered active versus inactive. And to your right, we have goals such as created the fifth heat map, or share the heat map five times. And those again are those one-off metrics that ultimately our goal is, which one of these could potentially be our North Star metric and to drive um, all of our efforts towards that once it's, once it's identified. So what do we wanna do with these once they're defined? We wanna align your team around these metrics. So let's determine what team is responsible for growing them the person on the team that's responsible for addressing any challenges or owning, quote unquote, that metric. Um, where will these metrics be tracked? A lot of times you have um, teams completely misaligned on where everything's tracked and how this, how everything's integrated. What are the strategies to grow these metrics? So if we've defined them, um, you know, what are, how are we going to grow them? And then what are the gaps and maybe our tech stack that we need to execute these? This is super important. So uh, an important question is, is, is your team aligned? So a report by Forcer Research concluded that business with proper alignment see a 32% increase in revenue growth, um, while businesses with less will actually see a 7% decrease. Um, and only 8% of these companies even say that their marketing and sales teams are aligned. Ultimately, this is the gap, in my opinion, between success and failure. Get this right and you, you will succeed. So let's start with what teams are responsible for growing them. So as we silo these actionable metrics, um, we will we'll want to define who, what, which teams are responsible for growing these. This gives people a clear vision to align the team as to which teams and, and individuals are responsible for the metrics in in these columns. Then you'll want to determine on the team who owns the metric. So for instance, let's say each of your acquisition metrics are defined and an example here is the free trial metric. Who's responsible for making sure this metric is growing and hitting goals? Let's put an individual responsible for each one of these defined metrics so that as you have team meetings, you can determine, is this going in the right direction? You can also determine, is there data validation issues? Um, catch those before they become a problem. Um, all of this is proactive growth. And by assigning somebody these metrics, um, it's going to help you uh, make sure these are growing in the right direction or determine if, if you know, what do you need to do to make sure they do. 
tracking these is going to be important. Where are they going to be tracked? Everyone on the team in all business functions should understand within their team responsibility and their role and maybe who's even owning it. Either way, all of these metrics are going to be need to be tracked somewhere. We need to understand where those are. This is going to help your team clearly align with the product team, the sales and marketing team, um, the dev team, engineering, etc. So all of these guys are going to understand, hey, my metrics are, are here, and that's going to paint a, a, a big picture view as to how they're going to interact or how they're going to integrate. And then, of course, you can do data visual, visualization off of that. But this is a very clean, easy way to understand um, based on actionable metrics. Now, you're going to have to grow these metrics. So what are the strategies that you grow them? Now, if you, when you look at these individually and understand, all right, we've all agreed that these metrics are the most important ones for acquisition, activation, revenue, et cetera, then you can talk as a team and say, all right, so we've tried this, it worked, we, we, we're, we're going to try this, and or list everything out and determine what are, what are you going to focus on? What are the strategies you're going to focus on to reach um, growing these metrics? And it just helps you really understand maybe the gaps that you have now and what you need to concentrate on, or maybe uh, what you're doing and it, whether it's working or not. All right, so looking at a tech stack is always uh, a challenge, right? And understanding what tools you need to execute these strategies will give you the quote-unquote to tools to grow your business. And so you can look at what tools you have um, for growing these strategies, tracking, et cetera, and what tools you'll need. So you may have a, a group of tools that you'll be able to that you already have that you can put into each of these. And maybe you have some that you're reviewing that you can determine if this is something you need or not. And maybe you'll realize, hey, we don't have a tool that can help us grow this metric. Um, let's re do some research as to what we can use. And of course, tracking these becomes extremely important, right? So tracking your progress is going to be how you're gonna have data-driven growth. So the two things that we suggest are creating a tracking dashboard and creating team scorecards. So let's look at that. Creating a tracking dashboard. So we like to utilize a BI analytics tool called Databox. You can use whatever you like. The reason we use this now is because it aligns perfectly with our actionable metrics. We can actually have notifications for our team scorecard, which I'll talk about in a second. We can build out dashboards specific to our actionable metrics with um, goals, and we can track them once we have our goals set up as to whether we're hitting them or not. Um, so this aligns, you can build out your data box account exactly aligned with how you're defining and tracking your actionable metrics. Um, so this is just a suggestion, but any BI analytics tool will work as well. So setting up company and team scorecards, it's a simple way to hold your team accountable. At the end of the day, we need to understand where our gaps are or our problem areas are in growth. Is it a, are, do, are, we, are we missing out on a metric that we should be growing? Maybe we didn't define a metric properly. Maybe there is a team that's weaker than another team and we need to concentrate on building that team up. Either way, we need to understand and hold our, ourselves accountable, ourselves and our team accountable for growing these metrics. And by doing this, um, it allows us to clearly understand where we need to put concentration on for growing smarter and faster. So how do we determine the baseline numbers? Once you have, let's say your data box or your BI tool set up and you're tracking your metrics, we now can clearly start identifying some baselines. Now, this screenshot on the right does not relate to the number of times here in my example. So ignore the numbers. But the point is you would look at your, your BI analytics tool, understand more or less where is, where is our baseline right now um, to then be able to pull those into your scorecard. 
And off of that, you can determine your goals, right? So we can say, hey, here's our acquisition metric free trial. We currently are achieving 200 a month. Let's set our goal for 250. And maybe you review that weekly or if it's, um, you know, a, a demo business or something that maybe doesn't have quite as many signups, maybe you review it monthly. But either way, you'll want to be having team meetings to review these numbers and understand if you're achieving your goals. Um, I'll give a, I'll give a template of a scorecard as well. Um, but at the end of the day, here's what it would look like. Something to this effect is each of your metrics are defined. Um, they're color coded here as acquisition, activation, revenue, retention, referral, right? Um, and your metric as let's say a free trial is responsible. Uh, Michael Jordan is responsible for instance, and has a goal of 250. Now it's greater than or equal than to this in our weekly meetings. And what did we achieve between this date and this date or this week, whatever that is, uh, did we hit that goal or not? And so you'll start seeing trends of we're hitting certain goals or some metrics aren't. Maybe we need to redefine our goals. Um, but either way, you're, you now have a big picture view as to how are you going to grow your business? Who's responsible for it? And how does it look? Now, the other option is, here is to create team specific scorecards. So, for instance, um, like a product marketing team scorecard. So outside of the big picture actionable metrics, um, you can create specifically a product marketing team scorecard. Having a, whoever the product uh, manager is it may report somewhere else or in a, in a leadership meeting where our problem areas are. And maybe you have that monthly and then you determine strategies off of that, like which teams um, need help from leadership in different areas. Right. So you could have a leadership team scorecard and you could have individual business function team scorecards. One other er other important thing to note here is actual metrics are fantastic. However, there may be other important metrics specific to your team worth tracking in your scorecard. For instance, time to answer support ticket. The goal might be, hey, we want to be under one minute to answer support ticket. I don't know. But the point is, did we hit that specific uh, goal for your role in our meeting as well? So the nice thing about here is you can have your actual metrics and then you can also have role specific uh, metrics that you, you track for accountability as well. Just a suggestion. Now, how do we identify opportunities? This is, becomes really important. A lot of people build out tracking dashboards and they determine, hey, we see it, we see a drop here. There's an opportunity. I see an opportunity here. Or we need to focus here. However, it's generally deeper than that. We need to ask more important questions. It's great to start there, but how do you dig in deeper? Um, and a lot of times companies have data scientists to do these things, to answer questions such as how many users became paying customers that completed user onboarding or were activated versus those that didn't. Or maybe rich, which retention metric or action when completed is leading to the highest value customers. Again, maybe your North Star metric, that would be important. What other actions are highly engaged users doing versus those that are not? So we need to be able to dig deeper into the data to understand true opportunities. So how do we do that? This is a, this is a partner company of ours, uh, by far the best tool, in my opinion, for really identifying opportunities. They make it easy to track actual metrics. Again, we recommend Databox because it aligns with our actual metrics framework as well as intertrends because it aligns perfectly with tracking our actual metrics and helping you determine the highest growth opportunities. Um, and the great thing about this tool is it works wonderfully for product managers. Um, it also is a leverage tool for data scientists, but you don't have to be a data scientist for this. It's a, it's a, it's a, a, a tool that will help product managers identify these opportunities without having to be a data scientist or having those additional skill sets. So check it out, entertrends.com. Um, I'm going to provide a template to give you a head start here. So um, this is our actual metrics canvas. Uh, we do make updates. This is version six. And 
the, the link here, um, bit.ly slash actionable dash metrics dash v6 will give you this template so that you can work from um, trying to fill this out for your own business in the same similar regard to uh, how we did this with Hotjar. And there's some, some instruction or guidance in here as well. Great, now it's time to get to work. So if you want help defining your company's actual metrics, we're actually gonna offer 10 free calls to help define these with you together. Uh, I didn't have time to set up a landing page or anything, but feel free to email me at trevor at interact.com if you're interested in discussing these details and setting up a call. Be happy to chat with you and uh, look forward to talking with you to define your metrics. Or feel free to shoot me uh, an email anytime with any questions as well. Hopefully today was super helpful in understanding why it's so important to, to define the metrics that matter most for your business. And um, hopefully you can get this together and, 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 and grow. Thank you much.